Okay, this is a recording of capacitors and what they mean, what they are. So I'm going to start with two parallel plates. Those are these two right here. One of which has a positive charge and one of which is a negative charge. But they both have the same charge density. So if you want the charge density of the positive plate is equal to the charge density of the negative plate, you can express that like that. <clears throat> We know in this case what the strength of the electric field is in between the two plates. Of course, the electric field is always pointed from the positive charged plate to the negatively charged plate, and the electric field is uniform, as electric fields are when you have plates, or essentially planes of charge. All right, so that's the electric field. It's pointed downward in this case. <clears throat> we know that the strength of the electric field is equal to the charge density on either of the plates, divided by epsilon zero. Okay, so that is, of course, that's the strength of the electric field. And we know that uh, the potential between the plates, if the spacing between the plates is D, the potential between the plates, I'll call that delta V if you like, or if you like, it's, it's the potential of the positive plate if the negative plate is zero, So if negative plate is zero, or has a potential of zero, then V for the positive plate is going to be equal to the electric field strength times the spacing between the plates. All right, so that's what the potential difference is between the plates. Now I'm going to introduce a new quantity for you, and an equation too. This quantity I'm going to call the capacitance. And it corresponds to how much charge can be stored on an object, in this case on the plates, versus or per volt, let's say per volt. In other words, the bigger the voltage here between the plates, the more charge um, that can be put on the plates, basically is what we're saying. And we're going to relate this equation like this, that Q is equal to C times V. So this is the definition of the capacitance, and unfortunately is the symbol C, which we also use for the unit coulombs for charge, but this C represents capacitance. And it can get confusing because Q is a charge, which is in coulombs, which also has the abbreviation C. So keep that in mind. Make sure you know which C we're talking about when I write C down. And if of course, this is the voltage between the plates, or the voltage difference between the plates. Okay, so this is a general equation. I remember it, for those of you who are from Southern California, that Q, somebody once told me this, Q equals Chula Vista. So I remember uh, that, that actually makes it really easy for me to remember this formula. Q is equal to CV, more C is this chula, V is the vista. But for whatever, however you remember it, this also gives us a way to calculate this thing which we, we're going to call the capacitance that we're going to talk a lot about. The capacitance um, is kind of like a cup. I, I liken it to a cup. And it tells us how much charge and uh, this device, this object, these two parallel plates, can hold for a given voltage. So you can write it like this, Q is equal to C is equal to Q divided by V. So if I want to actually calculate the size of the capacitance, this is how I could do it. If I knew the amount of charge on something, and I knew the voltage that that charge creates, that ratio gives me this thing that we call the capacitance. 
And the bigger the capacitance, the more charge that can be stored for a given voltage. And sometimes you want a lot of capacitance on something because it's a way to store charge, and therefore it's a way to store energy. So sometimes you might have heard that uh, energy storage is a huge issue these days. Batteries are, of course, one way to do it. That's a way to store the energy in terms of the chemicals that are inside the battery. For a capacitor, the way to store energy is actually with electric fields and charges. So it's storing energy is what it's doing, and the bigger the capacitor, the more energy can start, it can store. All right, so I am going to show you how we can actually calculate the capacitance of our parallel plate capacitor, the one I drew above, which has a plate that's charged positive and another plate that's charged negative. Whoops, it's supposed to be a different color. Another plate that's charged negative that are separated by some distance and that have an area A. I'm going to show you this, and it comes out really quite cleanly. It's a nice little... Uh, exhibition of how we come up with the equation. So let's say we have, uh, I told you earlier, we have a charge density of sigma plus on the positive plate, sigma minus on the negative plate. So that means that the charge on the positive plate is equal to sigma plus times A, where A is the plate's area. The charge on the negative plate is equal to sigma minus times A. That's the charge on the plate. And we actually talk about either one of these as being the charge we're interested in. All right, so I'm going to um, write also write sigma as um, I'm going to solve for sigma here. Let me, me re-express myself. I'll say sigma for either one of these cases is equal to the charge on either plate divided by the plate's area. So that's the equation I'm going to use. And we've already talked about this. This is the definition of the charge density. But I'm going to plug that definition into the equation for the electric field. And the electric field, as you know, is equal to sigma over epsilon zero when the electric field is between uh, the two plates. All right? So we have in, when between the plates, we have this equation. And I, this is what I showed you earlier up above. And so I'm going to write this out. Then if I plug this sigma into here, I get that the electric field is equal to Q divided by A epsilon zero. So that's the electric field between two parallel plates, where Q is the charge on one of the plates. And that charge on the other plate is also going to be the same size Q, just the opposite sign. So this is electric field. between two plates of opposite charge. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to turn to my equation that says that this thing called the capacitance is equal to um, Q divided by V. All right, and I'm going to find what my V is because my V is just my electric field times distance. So I can say V is equal to electric field times distance. And my Q is just my Q. I'll keep, I'll keep this Q here. Watch what happens when I plug in um, V here. V is equal to E times D, which is equal to Q times D divided by A epsilon zero. So this is what V is equal to because V is equal to this and E is equal to this. So if I put all of these together, this is what I get for V. Now I'm going to solve for capacitance. Capacitance is equal to Q divided by QD divided by A epsilon zero. Now if you Notice this, you'll see, oh, the Q's cancel. So my capacitance actually is not a function of my the amount of charge I have, which is makes sense, actually, if, if we think about it a little bit more. But what I get is this, that my capacitance is equal to A times epsilon zero, which, again, is the permittivity of free space, 
that's the 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 <clears throat> coulomb squared per newton meter squared that divided by d so a is the area of one of the plates they both have the same area and d is the separation between the plates And this equation is known as the parallel plate capacitance equation. Sometimes it's written like this, epsilon naught A over D. It just doesn't matter what order I put it in. And the units of the capacitor or capacitance are something called a farad. And what a farad means is it's the amount of charge in coulombs per volt. That's what's referred to as a farad. So you'll see capacitors in terms of farads. That's what their value is listed as. And a farad is a really big capacitor. I actually have one. Um, I have several of them that I can show you. They, they store a lot of charge for a volt, um, enough to light a light from it. But a lot of capacitors that we see are often in units of microfarads. So you'll see a lot of capacitors that are listed as microfarads, so millionths of a farad. Like say maybe 100 microfarads is a very common value of your capacitors. And you have that one in your lab kit. And uh, it is, if you look at that little capacitor you have in your lab kit, you'll actually see that it looks almost like there could be a little plate in there. And there are. There's two plates separated by a tiny little film. And we'll talk about that more in another video. But this is the equation for parallel plate capacitors that you can use on the homework.